Hello, Kerry here from The Bloke and uh, today we are uh, reviewing and talking a little bit about a very cool new camouflage system from Hunter's Element. Um, what is uh, primarily different from anything else that, that I'm aware of is on the market in New Zealand from a New Zealand manufacturer anyway is the fact that uh, Hunter's Element decided to go instead of the traditional mimicry pattern which is making it look like your surroundings so leaves and branches they went with a disruptive or digital pattern for their camo and this is it this is Hunter's Element Veil um, I really like this camo it's, I've been interested in camouflage systems and especially disruptive digital camouflage systems for a while um, so when I saw this came through I sort of got in touch with them and said, hey, I'd be real keen to try it out. Um, they were kind enough to send me some kit to try on a seeker hunt down in the Kaimanawas, where we took this out and I basically wore it for a week straight, got it pretty smelly and uh, got to try it in a few different uh, situations. Unfortunately, we didn't come away with a seeker that day or that week, but um, I guess that's the nature of seeker hunting. Uh, so, Veil Camo. Um, how is it different? Well, disruptive camouflage uh, as a concept works slightly differently from mimicry. Um, you have several different layers which build up the overall pattern. You have your macro, your micro, and uh, isoluminescence, which is uh, contrast. You'll be able to read more about this in the full article. Essentially though, the macro is the big patterns, the big blocks of colour that you see here, and the micro are all the small dots and uh, small patterns overlaid breaking it up. The idea being, and uh, this is the key to it, is that it provides a disruptive pattern or breaking up your uh, human silhouette whether you're up close when you're seeing the micro patterns, further away when you're seeing the macro patterns here, or even further away still when a lot of camouflages just turn into a blob um, because of the level of contrast that is in this camo, it still seems to break up your silhouette. And it does a very good job of it. Um, there are some photos through as well that you can check out and just see how much it just merges into the background whether you're quite close or whether you're quite far away. It doesn't just turn into this big blob of colour that some of the tra traditional uh, mimicry camos have. Hunter's Element have a couple of different ranges in their clothing system. Up the top end you have your XTR which is your highly water repellent, uh, highly technical jackets. I've got the XTR Extreme jacket, it's an awesome jacket. The only thing I was finding is pushing through the bush, going through bush lawyer, stuff like that, it would pull a little bit. Now this is the nature of any uh, single layer technical jacket like that. You run into the same issues with Gore-Tex uh, or any of those products which are uh, smooth surfaced. The other issue you get is it'll make a little bit more noise when you're rubbing across things. Um, the XTR certainly isn't as noisy as a Gore-Tex or probably even a vent jacket would be, uh, but it's more than your traditional fleece or brush tricot products like this. So I was talking to Robert uh, about the systems and we're looking for something a little bit more suitable for bush bashing and he suggested I try out the rugged bush coat. Uh, this is a brushed tricot style material with a DWR coating on it, so it is waterproof, not as much as the XTR, but then if you're under the canopy, you're also probably not going to be getting as wet. Again, if you're venturing out into the open, you're going to be wanting to thinking about something like an XTR, or in my case, probably a poncho to go over the whole lot and over my gear. XTR jacket though, um, is going to be noisier and is going to... Um, it's not going to keep you quite as warm as this jacket wool either. Because this is the fleece style inside uh, tricot, like I said, DWR on it, it's going to keep you a little bit more warmer than, say, the XTR, where you would be wanting to put another layer underneath in the same situation. What it does mean, though, is you'll heat up quicker than this if you're being quite active in the bush. Um, and Kaimanawas, as you probably know, there's lots of ups and downs and ups. Um, and very quickly I found I was warming up and uh, needing to strip this layer off. One thing that uh, I would like to see on this, but then you're going to put it up into another price point, is uh, pit zips so you can dump some heat out. If I had those, I probably could have zipped them open, left the jacket on a little bit more, and not be taking on on and off so much. But the nature of a layered system or any technical system is you need to be prepared to take those layers on and off to moderate your own heat. 
otherwise you're going to overheat, you're going to start sweating, and then when you stop, that sweat's going to cool down and you're going to freeze. So um, there is always a little bit of management that needs to be done with these clothing systems. Um, if you find that you are overheating or getting cold or all these things, it's probably because you're not actually putting layers on or taking them off to modulate your heat correctly. So you just need to stop, think about it, am I getting hot? It is time to take the jacket off. Am I getting cold? It's time to put that jacket on. Uh, don't power through it because what will happen is you'll get uh, to the point where then you have to do something drastic either to cool down because you're drenched in sweat, take the jacket off, get some wind, freeze, hypothermia. Um, or the other extreme being that you just heat up so much that you start dehydrating yourself and going into hyperthermia. So uh, this jacket is awesome though. It's uh, Velcro clasps up here to close up your cuffs. So I really find I pretty much just leave them sitting where they are. It's a schmock design like my XDR jacket. I really like them, especially because I'm often wearing a day pack or a pouch or something over here that uh, makes this whole area useless for pockets anyway. Uh, it's also less zip, so to me it's uh, less places for water to get in. The hood on it, um, it has a really good hood on it, and it's interesting, if you look at the Hunter's Element website, you'd be forgiven for thinking it doesn't actually have a hood, but it does, and it is a very good hood. Again, keeps your ears warm, there's just that fleece lining on the inside. One pocket up here, um, again, I would almost like another pocket here, like they do in a lot of their other jackets but you increase cost. Uh, this jacket is um, really well priced, um, but you start adding things like pit zips, extra pockets, I suppose it's gonna bring that up again. Um, it's not a clincher, uh, but you know, these are things uh, I can always suggest. I found uh, wandering around the Kaimanoas, um, we were late June, early July, so I guess the morning's about three, four degrees and then warming up during the day. Um, I would, uh, as soon as I was moving, I'd probably get warm enough, so I'd strip this jacket off. And then this is actually just the uh, summer prime layer, not the winter prime layer. And I found wandering around uh, stalking, that was more than enough to keep me warm. It's a long sleeve system, it's got sort of the polo neck to go up over your, to your neck here, zip up the front. And yeah, I found that was more than enough to keep me warm while wandering. When we stopped for a break, uh, and if you uh, stopped for any length of time, then I was looking at throwing the jacket back on because it would cool down fairly quickly as I stopped moving around and was generating that heat. If your hunting style was more than more likely finding a good posse to uh, camp down in and um, wait for animals to pass on by, then you'd probably be wanting to consider the winter layer uh, in the cooler seasons. Uh, but interesting, like I said, with the summer layer uh, and this jacket, it was great. I could just take that this jacket on and off and modulate my heat that way. Um, the Hydropower trousers, again, uh, similar material to the jacket, and again, difference between this and the XTR trousers is that it's not going to uh, pull as much or be damaged as much by brushing against trees or getting caught into things. It's still highly water resistant. Uh, the only thing I would say is though, um, unlike say my Ridgeline uh, pants that I have, uh, it doesn't have that dry ass, I think they call it, uh, patch on there. So if you sit down on a wet branch or something, you will start feeling it seep through. Um, again, not a major. Adding something like that's gonna add cost. It's also gonna add a bit of noise because it's more a material like the XTR jackets. So yeah, uh, trousers, jacket, shirt was excellent. Um, and then of course you've got to remember, especially with camouflage systems, is if you're in full camouflage, but you've got your pasty, in my case, pasty white face or pasty white hands showing, then you're kind of negating the point of most of the camo. So they've got their uh, heat beater hat, um, they've also got a beanie in the veil system, and they have the buff. Covers up. Um, remember the buff, um, it's only moderate round, uh, amounts of warmth. It's really for camouflage. It'll uh, help with a bit of warmth, but not the same as say a merino buff or something like that would. It was getting really cold. I was taking this off, putting my merino buff on instead, um, and that was keeping me nice and toasted. So yeah, the um, Veil camo system is awesome. Um, I see they've now got some boots coming out in the same system. They obviously have gloves as well, and there is a pack, gaiters, and a few other accessories in it. It's really awesome. I love the concept of the digital disruptive camouflage. Um, 
in a totally superficial manner as well I really like the look of it and uh, this jacket in particular I've started wearing everywhere because I enjoy it so much it's it's nice and warm um, it's nice and comfortable but I am the guy wearing camo jackets around town um, and it's interesting I get asked a lot as to where the digital systems come from what the jacket is um, noticeably or not a, a lot so uh, yeah very cool so yeah, Hunter's Element. This is the rugged bush uh, coat, jacket, hydro power trousers, the summer prime layer, there's also the winter prime layer as well, uh, and their heat beater cap, and their buff. Awesome. So the nature of camouflage in regards to hunting is obviously to not be seen. When you're out hunting, uh, especially things like deer, you've also got to consider uh, smell, uh, and noise. Smell is your wind, noise is your moving as slowly as possible and sight, especially when you're getting in closer that you might be in the bush situation and especially if you're bow hunting, um, sight becomes very important. So anything you can do to add those extra couple of seconds even from when uh, you are able to see the animal you're after versus when they're able to see you is going to increase your chances of getting, uh, getting that shot off. So the Hunter's Element Veil System, um, the military has, uh, all around the world, has been using disruptive digital systems for a very long time. In fact, I can't think of a military group that uses any mimicry style camouflage, which is interesting. They're obviously trying to camouflage uh, from other human eyes. Our eyes are probably one of the most perceptive when it comes to colour and pattern and to a certain extent movement. So there must be something in it if all the massive groups of people trying to hide from each other are using the disruptive systems rather than the mimicry. Uh, looking overseas now, um, even outside of the military style, you're seeing a lot more systems coming through that are based on this. Uh, the, the Predator camo, I've always thought, is a very high co contrast camo system, um, and that's almost just abstract shapes um, breaking up the human silhouette. Uh, the, Sitka, I think it's pronounced, has, uh, with their Optifade system, has been around for quite a while. And again, that's quite similar to this, uh, where they have one for uh, open, open land areas, and they have another one pretty much designed for um, uh, hunting from up in tree stands, from where it's designed to disrupt based on an angle of looking up. And I think that's the one of the cool things about digital systems, you can cater them specifically to the area or to the uh, course of action that you're involved in. So yes, uh, Hunter's Element Veil Camo, very, very cool.